Hey, Beulah Youth, welcome to our fourth episode of Small Talk. And I am extremely excited that we have Daniel M., our Senior Associate Pastor, with us today. Um, if you do not know who Daniel is, um, Daniel's been with our church now for, oh, I don't know, Daniel, how long have you been with us for now? A year? Uh, this time around, about nine or ten months at this wow. point. Yeah, yeah, this time around. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, if you do not know Daniel, he's just going to tell us a little bit about who he is. And I'm going to give you one minute, Daniel. you got one minute oh, okay. to tell us who you are, what you're about, tell us your story. Yeah. So born and raised in Vancouver and I've uh, been married 14 years this year. Have three kids, Victoria, Adeline and Macarios, 10, 9 and 5. So long story short, so I, we're, Christina and I moved and, and we've lived in a lot of different places, but for the last five years before coming back to Edmonton, we were in Nashville and doing, doing work down there. I was a teaching pastor at a church and uh, serving with an organization called Lifeway, uh, serving pastors around um, predominantly North America, but around the world as well. And then honestly, this, and I can probably share a little bit more about this later, but um, yeah. I don't know, like a year before we ended up coming up, God began stirring in our hearts uh, to say, hey, you got to go back to Canada and Beulah is a place to be. So that's a, that's a huge story in and of itself, but just a big yeah. uh, a snapshot. And we were here from 2010 to the end of 2014, uh, the first time around. Yeah. So when you were here before, you had a Canadian accent and then you went away and then you picked up a bit of a kind of, a, you know, that, learn how to say y'all. <laughs> southern slang and then because every you know most of our youth we, we like they're a part of weekends and and they've been hearing you teaching and preaching and they're like where's this y'all coming from so that makes sense that Nashville, <laughs> America, that, yeah and that's why i barbecue now too and smoke meat because yeah i learned that all in the south <laughs> that's awesome well daniel we're stoked that you're with us um for this week and and just so you know um uh, we've had a number of people over the last few weeks uh, we had uh, Pastor Joel, uh, we had Josh Thompson, we had some of our youth last week who were sharing and teaching two grade nines, which was awesome. Um, and so we're excited you're with us this week. And we've been asking the same, one same question to everybody. And that question is, what has God been teaching you during this season? And so we would love to know, Daniel, what's God been teaching you during this season? Yeah, uh, presence. Presence is probably, if, if we were to choose one word to sum it all up, it's presence. For me, I am of the personality where I just want to go, 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 go. And, and it's just, if I'm not feeling well, or if I'm stressed, doesn't matter. I kind of <laughs> push it all down and just try to survive and get through it and, and, and try to push and grind through it. So that's my MO as it relates to life in general. But, you know, there's been a ton of change so much change. And there's this expert, uh, Dr. Henry Cloud, that he, he summed it up so well. He said, we are in a moment right now where our brains are registering everything as an error. So all the change that we've felt from going to school to not going to school and thinking that the year was done and then, oh wait, now I have to homeschool and what does that mean? And, and just all, you know, up and down all the change, oh, we can meet, oh, we cannot meet. And there's just all of every, every disruption, the entire disruption is basically in our brains being registered as errors. And that's why we often have that emotional reaction of, based on your personality, some get away, right? And some kind of, oh, whatever, okay, I, I can't deal with this. And I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna do something else and just kind of push it all down or other people who try to hit it head on. And we all have different reactions. But what I've noticed in and through this time is how important it is to be present, to be present with what I am, what I am feeling, how stressed I am, and that I'm not just spilling that out to someone else, or not, not necessarily even going straight first and foremost to Christina, my wife, but really first and foremost bringing it to God. So for me, the spiritual disciplines of reading the scripture in the morning before I start my day, of journaling, and of some days really just reading and just sitting in silence, putting my timer on for 10 minutes, and just breathing in and out and meditating on what I just read in the scriptures. This, this practice of being present has been so critical for me. That's awesome. Uh, that's actually, it's really encouraging. We, um, when, when we started uh, doing Youth Online, we were thinking of ways in which we could help 
um, be present with God. Um, mm -hmm. And you just mentioned there, like you, you, your your personal preference is morning. Um, you yeah. start your day yeah. um, bit of journaling, bit of reading, um, spending some time in quiet. Um, that that's awesome. Those are like really like easy things to do, I think. Um, yeah. But just to be able to like make that like a, a real like habit. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, um, and I think as we um, talk in our small groups later on, we'll talk a little bit about that. What, what does it mean to be present? And I think be present with God, yes. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes be present with ourselves because like, yeah. I know I totally just like, sometimes I just, I just rush away with the day and I just like forget about myself. You know what I mean? I just like, yeah. oh, I haven't eaten for like seven <laughs> hours. Like what the heck? Um, and then um, also then being present with others and so being yeah. able to be present with their family and with those around us that's that's really helpful thank you um, yeah and 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 that's why in journaling that's why when i i don't i like i know when i say journaling some people might be like dear diary no i actually i just journal my prayers because yeah. for me my I, I find if i don't do that I'm literally just praying the same thing over and over again. Or, you know, you kind of hear about this, this scripture, you know, pray without seizing. And it's just, it doesn't really, I, I'm not really spending the time or, you know, I'm chasing squirrels. And I'm like, oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do that. Yeah. So for me, journaling is I'm literally just writing my prayer out, writing how I feel to God. I mean, we see examples of that in the Psalms of how David was honest with how he was emotionally doing as well and how he's speaking to his soul too um so then i just kind of let that be a, a way for me to slow down be present to god and to how i'm feeling that's awesome thank you uh, i'm gonna ask you a second question and this is not one that we've asked anyone else yet this is a, a okay. new question for you um but this question um is really personal to to our church family and so um i'd love to ask you um what are your hopes for beulah over these next few years so we're coming through some crazy times now um there's going to be some changes and stuff happening um but what are your hopes over the next kind of few years for beulah yeah i mean i wish i could um go to the mountain and come down with some sort of message but um i i i can i can kind of answer that based on how God called us here. And we were in Nashville and loving it. Um, I mean, born and raised Canadian. We just got our green cards in the States and loved, I mean, loved everything about life down there. And God just began unsettling our hearts in about October, November, 2018. Uh, well, fast forward, I, I come and preach at the church in January, lead a staff retreat. That's where I met you, Chris for yeah. the first time and then and then came back in april to preach and do this interview kind of thing well when i was there that's when god just completely broke christina's and my heart for edmonton and the, the the fascinating thing for us was that when we were here the first time around from 2010 to the end of 2014 when i thought of where god is moving it was in edmonton when i thought of where is the mission field i didn't think edmonton when I thought, okay, where's the most exciting place to make the greatest kingdom impact? I did not think of Edmonton. No, not Edmonton. No, <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> Literally, I was thinking Montreal, where I'd pastored before, or Korea, or the missions field, or all that stuff. I didn't. I knew God had called us here, but I didn't know from the sense of, oh, you know, I, I didn't see that about this. Well, when we were praying about coming back, and it was April of 2019, and, and we were praying and, and we preached, I preached on the weekend and Christina and I went back to the hotel room and we just continued to pray and be like, God, is this, we know this is a great opportunity to come back. We love Canada, all this. We don't want to be in the States long term, but God, is this from you or is it not? And that evening, and we were singing the song, The Goodness of God. And that was kind of a theme for the for when we were discerning about whether or not to come back, that song, Goodness of God, was constantly on repeat. And God just in that moment opened our eyes to the fact that Edmonton is a mission field. And he broke our hearts for Edmonton in a way that he had that we had never experienced before for Edmonton and for Beulah. And all that to say right? All that to say, I've seen God move so powerfully in spiritually and I mean, in, in so many different ways. Uh, when I was in Montreal, when I was in China on missions, when I was in Korea, when like all of these places where I just saw God move so visibly, so tangibly and so powerfully. And when we were praying back in April about coming back, 
that is how I sensed God moving. And, and it was like, hey, I'm about to do a new thing here. I'm about to pour out my spirit. All, and this was a specific image. Um, in Revelation, there's this uh, image about a, a golden lampstand full of prayers of the saints. And, and it's amazing to be a part of a church that's 99 years old. It's crazy, right? And the image that I got was that like you were to uh, knock down a, a vending machine, not like I know what not, not like I have personal experience. <laughs> or That's for sex or something. People are stealing your vending machines. <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's it's you have to kind of knock it back and forth and you get the momentum and it finally falls. Well, that's the image that I saw of this lampstand where all the prayers that you, that your parents, that all of us, that everyone has been praying and sowing into Beulah and sowing into Edmonton, the image that I got was that all that was going to begin pouring out and that they were, uh, and that these prayers were going to begin to be answered and that we were going to see renewal. We were going to see revival. We were going to see this awakening happening uh, in our midst in this time. And it wasn't like a, Oh, it, it, it happened. Oh, I don't know when a long time ago, or, or it might happen in the future. No, I really do believe that we're going to see that. Uh, so yeah, I just, I just can't wait. So we're all back together, but <laughs> you know, here's the crazy thing, Chris, even when I'm preaching on the weekend or, um, you know, doing the announcements or anything, and there's no one in the auditorium, I literally sense the spirit of God moving. And, and there are moments where I'm speaking here and there that I did not plan on saying, because I know that the same Holy spirit that fills me, fills you, fills all of us. And he is so powerfully moving, whether we're present with each other or not. So I'm just so excited to see what happens when, uh, when, when as a leadership, we're just, here we are, God, or here we are. And he's just like, okay, yes, that's who I'm looking for. People who say and live their lives with a surrendered, here I am. That's who God's looking for. And with that, I mean, we can, I mean, yeah, there, there's, no, there's no telling as to how God can move when he uh, has an army of people ready to, to do what he wants. That's so good. Yeah, so good. And I think that, um, um, I think for me growing up, uh, when I was, you know, when I was the same age as, as most of our youth that are, are tuning in tonight, when, when, when uh, I thought missions, I thought abroad, right? I thought yeah. like, you have to go somewhere or you have to go somewhere that was like, maybe like impoverished and therefore yeah. you're doing it. Um, um, but the same kind of same stuff was happening for me when I was when I moved to England, and then when I when I moved here, it was it was the same heart of of the, the mission field is basically wherever I am, <laughs> wherever I am is a mission field because because God is with me, therefore God wants to do stuff, and, and so yeah. and, I, and I think that's so good that like yes, Edmonton's a mission field because there's so many people here who need Jesus, uh, yeah. and there's there's so many youth on this. Uh, on this uh, like kind of conversation tonight, they're going to be talking about where is my mission field and, and who can I um, reach and who can I um, uh, be Jesus's hands and feet for. And so mm -hmm. I think that's I guess all, that's so good. And we'll talk about that in our small groups as well. About hey, where's our mission field? That's that's really good. And I'm going to throw awesome. one last question for you. Okay. Um, and this may be a really simple question, or it could be like a really deep, profound question. Um, but the question I want to ask you is if you could roll back the clock. 20 years okay so you're in your like mid 30s right so that that's mm -hmm. right you're in your mid 30s you can roll the clock back 20 years to your like teenage self so teenage daniel zits yes. you know the works yeah. um you know and if you could say to teenage daniel one piece of advice what would you say to him <sighs> slow down stop trying to get to the next i was obsessed with next I was obsessed with tomorrow. I was the youngest of uh, I three older sisters and I was always trying to play catch up with them. All my friends were older than me at the church and all this stuff. And I just, I just wanted to desperately get to the next. Mm -hmm. And when I was there, I wasn't content. And then I wanted to get to the next. And I kept on wanting to just fast forward my life so much so that I'm, I mean, I've made a lot of mistakes but I think there's so much where I think in my mistakes, I've hurt others because I've just tried to steamroll and get to the next and get to the next. And I would just say what is most important is faithfulness today. Mm -hmm. And rather than being so obsessed with 
what then is going to happen or what next or what next? What does it look like for me to be faithful today? And here's the thing, Chris, I, I grew up in Vancouver. I didn't realize how good I had it growing up in Vancouver and how unique of a city Vancouver really was. Uh, moved to Ottawa, moved to Montreal, moved to Korea, moved to Nash Edmonton, moved to Nashville. I've lived in so many different places. And the thing that is fascinating that I've, that I've learned in hindsight is the allure of a new city and whatever that cool city or cool place is, it fades away. Uh, after a couple months, and it, it just all becomes the same. It, it, it's basically where you live is the sum of who you are in community with. Mm -hmm. And who you are in community with makes or breaks it. So there is no actual ideal place. Uh, because yeah, we're complaining about the mosquitoes right now. Uh, <laughs> right? And we're complaining about this, that and the other. But no matter where you live, there's always complaints about all that. So I just I just felt compelled to share that because I think we often move because of work or move because of university or move because it's a cool city or move. And we have this sense in our mind. And I had this as a teenager. So I was like, I can't wait to get out of my parents' home. I can't wait to leave this city. I've lived in this city my entire, I can't wait to leave. And we let all of these other things or opportunities be reasons we move and leave. But here's the thing. I haven't seen many people decide to move because of church or stay because of what God is doing. And friends, God is doing something right now in Edmonton. And perhaps instead of placing so much stake in this university, that university, my life, wherever my dreams, perhaps it's a matter of saying, hey, what is God doing right now in our church and in our city? Because God is, it's crazy, right? God is calling people to our city because he is preparing something. He is doing something in our midst and underneath the surface that I think we're beginning to see pockets of fruit, but it's, it's God is moving people here. So I, that's just the challenge that I wanted to give to say, yeah. perhaps God, perhaps university and work shouldn't actually be the primary reason we move here or there. And perhaps it should actually be God, how are you moving? What role do you want me to be a part of that? And then school, work, all that stuff needs to be secondary because God is our heavenly father and he's the one that's going to provide for all of our needs. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think for me, that's, that's like, I struggle with the same thing too. And, mm -hmm. and it definitely did as a teenager, um, wanting the next best thing, um, next best, best phone, next best totally. pair of sneakers. <laughs> next best, you know, trip, um, next best, but yeah, all those things. It was always like, what's next? And, and circling back to what you started, at like your first point of the God has been just teaching you what it means to be present and, and just, mm. and, and then you look back and you go, man, if, 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 if only like 15 year old Daniel experienced something like I'm experiencing now, I wonder yeah. how that would have impacted um, you know, being present. Uh, and I think that's so helpful for us. And so in our small groups, we're going to talk about presence. We're going to talk about the mission field. Maybe, maybe what, what is that? What is it I'm sensing God doing? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so I'm excited for the conversations that are going to come from, from this conversation that we had. Uh, and this has been so good. Um, so Daniel, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for being part of uh, small talk today. Uh, we love doing these little episodes and being able just to kind of get a glimpse into somebody's life. And I know for a lot of our youth, the, personally not met you yet and they're like who's the new guy um yeah. and so um even though it's been like nine months but they're like yeah. oh, i want to know him a bit better and so being able to just get a little bit insight into your life and your story and just kind of what god's teaching you that's been so good awesome. uh, so thanks chris thank you so much